Hi everyone, this is Jyoti. So in the first unit part, I did not cover the characteristics of a graphical user interface. That means the graphical system characteristics. What I have covered in the lecture three is the GUI characteristics. That means the WAMPG interface. But these seven important characteristics must also be included along with that. So the first one is like sophisticated visual presentation. So let's divide this title into parts. So let's go with the visual presentation. That means what people see on the screen is like we are seeing the visual things, right? So that is visual presentation. And like the main objective of this characteristic is like we need to present, I mean we need to replicate all these real world objects onto the screen. That means just the medium has been changed. Now we are familiar with all the objects in our environment, right? So those things, the real world objects or actions must be just simply replicated on the screen. And so this sophistication, now this word sophistication, it permits like uh, displaying of lines and it allow, which includes different uh, drawing things, icons and all. And it also supports different, uh, I mean, wide variety of character fonts, sizes and styles. And it also allows us for animations, which includes photography, motion, video and all. And it also permits 16 million or more colors on a screen itself. So, and the interface elements presented to the user includes like windows, menus and icons. That means the windows may be any type, primary window, secondary and dialog boxes. Mm -hmm. And coming to menus, it may be a menu bar, pop-up things, uh, pull-downs and cascading things. Mm -hmm. And coming to icons, we have text boxes, list boxes, combination boxes, scroll bars, buttons. So this is sophisticated visual presentation. That means simply just presenting the real world objects onto the screen. Just a medium has been changed. And coming to this pick and click interaction, it is simply like on the screen, whatever we want, we will be selecting it and we will perform our actions. That means identifying what element we need is the pick and pick thing. And then the signal to perform that action is a click. For example, let's take the mouse. Now, uh, like we will select some uh, objects on the screen. Then we will um, press that button. That means now this button, I mean, whatever we have selected is the pick, pick part. And clicking the button, is the second one that means you, i hope you got this like simply selecting and doing our own actions and the secondary thing in this pick and click interaction is keyboard that means using mouse and keyboard we are performing this pick and click interaction so this interaction helps for rapid selection and uh, feedbacks and coming to the third characteristics uh, it is like a restricted set of interface option just in this it follows the acronym wysiwyg that means what you see is what you get and coming to the fourth uh, characteristics it is visualization visualization is nothing but a, it's a cognitive process that means like we have voluminous data on the websites but like reading everything line to line it's become very hard for us right i mean like we may not complete all of the topics and we may sometimes we may not understand those concepts also so when the whole context now if it is represented in some animated video or if in some mind uh, mind maps or some charts then that pre then we will get those concepts very easily that means you like that it is just a simply graphical representation of the concepts now because of this graphical representations now we can it facilitates our mental insights our productivity will be increased and more accurately we can get the data that means not only just a graphical image or a graphical view, we can do it in any format that means visualization is simply the voluminous data is now changed into some other formats where people can understand it very clearly uh, fifth characteristic it is the object orientation so first thing what is object what people see in the environment it may be a physical object or anything so now these objects are divided into three types it may be a data object container object or device object so first uh, now let's come to the data object now for, if we take this document as an object then a paragraph sentences words letters all this comes as a sub objects in this document and uh, like how we will be like collection of objects simply like then how to collect all these objects there may be certain criteria like based on some query based on some multiple selection part that means based on some common as aspect we will be selecting those objects and coming to the uh, main constraint in this data object is like change in one object result in change in object of other set that means like uh, in a document like after finalized format if you change in between like if you add image and all now the page numbers in the in the 
I mean like now you have prepared a document and you have given some indexes that means in the page number 11 you have some image and after in the 12th page you have some table but suddenly now you have included another image into this uh, 12th page now the index of the table moves to 13th page right but now just a change of one object now resulted in change of another object i mean like just simply this change affects another one that is the constraint here and coming to the container objects i mean the second object first one we have discussed about data objects about related one example uh, document and coming to container objects like container object is like is an object that holds other objects in this we have three types again that means the workplace objects that means these are it is like the desktop where it is the storage of for all the objects and folders are like these uh, these are the place i mean this is for long term storage of objects and work area is a temporary storage i mean that uh, currently on which uh, things we are working they are stored under the work area and coming to device objects these are the physical things it may be like printer trash uh, baskets and like that and in this object orientation one important uh, pair, i mean uh, characteristic is like uh, persistence persistence is like object state must be automatically preserved that means like uh, if you are changing the window size now minimized mag maximized that means based on our action it is automatically getting changed that means it is maintaining some persistence that is what and coming to the sixth parameter uh, sixth characteristic it is the use of recognition memory it is like uh, like i should have continuous visibility of objects and assets so that we will not take off our mind that means like now i'm studying like this if i am maintaining some continuous visibility you will have a clarity and you may not skip things but if i put something like empty pages in between now because of that you may be distracted so that should not be done and coming to the seventh characteristic it is the concurrent performance of functions that means we can perform two or more things simultaneously multiple programs can be run so in a system i mean like uh, if we are doing two tasks but the primary one is like you left it i mean you're not uh, doing anything then our system has a capability of running the background things that is known as corporate multitasking but sometimes you may do two things simultaneously that means uh, you're playing a song and you are also like uh, do uh, editing any video that in that case you have opened two windows right now in that case it will uh, divide the time into slices that means it will swap between these two programs which is known as preemptive multitasking so these are the seven characteristics for graphical system thank you